If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Resistance is victory. That simple initial decision to stand up and to get involved and to take action is the most important decision you can make because from that flows all other major actions in the fight for freedom and human dignity worldwide. But you first got to get angry, you've got to get focused, and you've got to get engaged. The world is at a crossroads. We have a decision to make. No one can deny anymore that tyranny is growing and casting its long, dark shadow across not just the United States, but worldwide. But in the midst of all of this, and as we uh, move deeper into 2012, it is important to realize the incredible successes, complete and partial, that we've had against tyranny. These are just a few in the last year. In fact, after you're done watching this video, I would ask you to post comments with points that you believe have been victories so we can make a part two video. But here are just some of them. The SOPA bill, or Stopping Online Piracy Act, uh, which is really just a Trojan horse, as the inventors of the internet and many others uh, went public and uh, documented, to shut down free speech and to allow giant corporate monoliths uh, to basically carve up the internet and uh, take it over for their own uses and shut down their competition. But you saw the GoDaddy protest uh, that caused hundreds of thousands of their uh, customers to leave them. Many of the big uh, internet companies and, and, and smaller ones as well, led by Reddit and others, uh, saying that they were going to basically black out their websites uh, to protest the fact that this SOPA bill is a free speech uh, killing system. And now, because of the actions that you and others took, the system, who just a few weeks ago was very arrogant and said, resistance is futile, we're going to pass this, we've got hundreds more votes than we need in the House, suddenly it's crumbled, and they're saying, okay, we're shelving it for now. And they hope that later you'll go back to sleep, that they can repackage their lies and bring it back forward. But the point here is, when we take action, and when the people stand up, for basic fundamental rights, the system and the oligarchs that control it are brought to their knees. So a big victory in early 2012 against something the system told us was a foregone conclusion. They don't just stop there trying to craft our reality. They've told us for a year that Ron Paul cannot win, that no one would vote for him, that he wasn't even a real candidate, that there was no way he could ever come in third, fourth, fifth place, much less second in New Hampshire and a statistical dead heat in Iowa. But despite the entire dinosaur whore media, the zombie control media telling you he can't win and excluding him from debates and giving him 89 seconds in other debates and all the demonization and all the dirty tricks and everything they've got being thrown at Ron Paul, he is growing in the polls nationwide and is a very strong second place. Even if he loses, even if they engage in election fraud, we all win because real issues are being injected and a movement for liberty worldwide is growing. Ron Paul and all of us that support him aren't just an example for freedom here in the U.S. There are movements sprouting up all over the world. We are offering the alternative to the crony capitalist anti-free market monopoly men that run our government and other major governments who are trying to shut down the true free market and destroy our private property. Ron Paul and his resistance and our support of him is victory. Let me move to some of the other big victories we've had in the last few months. All over the United States, from California to Florida, but also in Canada and Europe and the United Kingdom, major cities and towns are removing the toxic waste sodium fluoride and other byproducts from their water supplies. One county in Florida has a million residents in it, and the city council overwhelmingly, after seeing the scientific evidence, moved to remove the toxic brain-altering chemical from the water supply. Huge victory. For more than 60 years, globalist corporations, in a bid to reduce fertility, 
chose bisphenol A as a key ingredient in most plastics to reduce fertility. There were literally thousands of other formulae that didn't have the estrogen mimicker in it. But now, 60 years later, all over the world, businesses, corporations, restaurants are advertising that they have bisphenol-free products, whether it's baggies for food or furniture or clothing. This is another example of a human awakening taking place. And in just a matter of a few years, public protest and voting with your dollars has overturned one of the main globalist tools of chemical control. Medical tyranny that was used in Nazi Germany, Soviet Russia, and here in the United States is on the run. Citizens all over the place are demanding now that dangerous high fructose corn syrup linked to diabetes and so many other diseases be removed. Major brands aren't even offering high fructose corn syrup versions. You go to the grocery store and it's, we're regular sugar or we're stevia. Another huge victory that humanity is having against the medical tyrants who are putting these Trojan horse compounds into our food and water as top globalists like Bertrand Russell promised they would do. But it gets even better. I've seen national studies where the higher the education level, like in areas in Northern California, the lower the vaccine rate is. Parents everywhere are realizing how dangerous vaccines are. And they're learning that in most cases, it doesn't even protect their children from the supposed pathogen that the vaccine gives you immunity for. And so all over the world, not just in the United States, people are waking up and actually reading what is in the ingredients list of vaccines. On the carbon tax issue, one of the most important agendas for the New World Order, we are seeing amazing victories. Since the Climate Gate emails came out and the public saw the fact that the UN was only trying to set up an excuse to monitor and control all human activity and literally tax breathing and tax carbon dioxide that plants live off of, since that came out, all of their major conferences have failed and more and more scandals and frauds have come out. Congress and the courts are overturning President Obama's attempt to shut down our energy supply and move our jobs to China. The carbon tax hoax and the scam of modern environmentalism is in deep trouble. And remember, that's a good thing because the globalist eugenicists don't want you concerned with real environmental issues like genetically engineered organisms and GMO and toxic waste they put in your water. Congress has overthrown the light bulb ban of President Obama. Sure, the bureaucracy's lawless, so they're continuing on with it, but they're going to end up being defeated in the end because the people are becoming wise to them. They've now learned that General Electric had the patent for their dangerous mercury-filled light bulbs and just simply wanted you to buy their new product so you could sit under headache-inducing fluorescent light bulbs all day instead of the pleasing yellow or white light of phosphorescent. The globalist Humpty Dumpty has had a great fall and all the propagandists and all the New World Order stooges and all the media whores can't put him back together again. And that's my next point. Depending on which poll you look at, Congress has a 9 to 11 percent approval rating, the lowest it's been in history. And they've had that rating for two years now. They know the public's awake to them. They know the public knows they're a pack of criminals. They know the people are waking up. And think about being the so-called mainstream media. It's their job to lie for this group of certified criminals who are admittedly up there engaging in insider trading and serious crimes every single day of the week. But not only is the old dinosaur globalist propaganda media dying, the alternative media is becoming the new media. And it's a thousand different flavors of true diversity and debate. And out of this college of discussion, the public is developing an amazing taste and a smell and a palate for what's real news and what's real information. The jig is up. The question is, how will these tyrants try to suppress this awakening? That's another big victory. The fight more and more is now out in the open and Congress has the lowest approval rating in history. And that leads me to a report where the media is bemoaning the fact 
that Congress didn't get very much done and there's incredible gridlock as if them passing thousands of new laws and regulations and new agencies every year is a good thing. If you read what the founding fathers said, gridlock is good. That's why they created three branches of government so that it's not easy to pass things. It's not easy to do things so that a dictator can't quickly take over the society. The New World Order's honeymoon to just ram through whatever they want in the name of public interest is over. The people are awake and are just beginning to pay attention. And that takes us to the National Defense Authorization Act. Some would say, well, it's not a victory that it passed. And overall, it's not. But we will snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. Notice that they had to come out and say that it didn't affect citizens at first in an attempt to kill opposition to the bill. Then when it came out that it did allow the secret arrest and disappearance and black bagging of citizens, Obama said, don't worry, I'll veto it. Again, a desperate attempt to kill public opposition. And they didn't want this to become a political issue. They just wanted to declare themselves emperors and above the law without scrutiny. Then once Congress passed it, as we told you he would, Obama signed it in the late hours of December 31st, 2011, when they thought no one was paying attention. The fact that they try to sneak this stuff through, the fact that they try to deny that it affects citizens shows that they're weak. They're scared of the public. They know you're awake. So they want these new powers so they can quietly train the police and military that what they're doing is kosher, that what they're doing is acceptable, that what they're doing is constitutional. They want to do it in secret and in the dark because they know that I'm here and Ron Paul is there and countless others are there like you out there watching, exposing what they're doing. You see, by the tyrants now ramming this through, they've woken up more people with this issue than I've ever seen. And so the old saying, the best way to take down a dictator is make him act like a dictator is certainly ringing true here. I want to close with two points. State nullification, 10th Amendment. The feds could pass a law declaring Obama or Mitt Romney God, but you can't legalize tyranny. And it's built into the Constitution. It's why we have states that when the federal government gets out of control, the states can get together and basically veto what the feds have done. States can do it as groups or they can do it individually. And that's what the 9th and 10th Amendment are all about and that's happening right now. You know, you've got the jury box, you've got the grand jury box, uh, you've got the courts, you've got all these different checks and balances, but you've also got the cartridge box. And in conclusion, I don't want to go to the cartridge box. My God, our ancestors did that. And it was a bloody seven-year war against the greatest empire the world had ever seen. But you know what? We had right on our side and we won. We had ideas that were more powerful than King George III's ideas. He had the big state, the pomp, the power, the tax assessor, the home invaders, people coming to your home without warrants, people shaking you and your wife down, people frisking you on the highway while you're riding your horse. We had the idea of basic freedom and due process and liberty, and it won out. But in just the month of December last year, there were 1.5 million instant checks through the FBI. And the government itself estimates that there's more than 2.1 guns sold for every FBI instant check that's made. That's not even counting private sales of guns at flea markets and neighbor to neighbor, grandpa to grandson. So you're looking at more than 3 million guns, an all-time record that were purchased in just the month of December. And I saw a survey where they were asking people, why are you buying guns? And they said, number one, I don't trust the government. Number two, I think we're going to have an economic collapse and civil unrest. So if the globalists think they got the jump on the American people, think again. Millions of Paul Revere's here in the United States and across the world have already warned the public. And a lot of people laughed at them. A lot of people laughed at myself and Ron Paul. But now that everything we talked about is unfolding, our credibility is skyrocketing. We have never been at a more important juncture in human development. Tyranny is coming in like a flood. But the spirit of liberty is raising up men and women everywhere as a standard against this corruption. All of us have to speak out and be involved now like never before. 
We're having victories every time we stand up and get involved. You have incredible power. That's why the tyrants always tell you that you're powerless, because the opposite is true. The only way these criminals can run our lives, the only way these social engineers can play games with us like they're God, is if we lay down in the ditch and do nothing. 2012 is the year that the resistance goes to the next level. It is the beginning of the end of the eugenicist New World Order.